For example, when Katy Perry says, Baby, you're a firework. Come on, let your colours burst. You know she's not saying that you're literally a bit of packaged gunpowder. You know she's saying that you're an amazing, vibrant person and you should let everyone see your wonderful potential. You're a firework. So it's a metaphor. And when you first heard the song, you probably understood that without even trying. Similes aren't just something your English teacher talks about either. Rihanna uses similes too. Hold me like a pillow, make me feel right. So, now that we've got rid of the idea that there is anything weird, scary or outdated about poetry, here is my homemade formula. Watch and listen carefully for five minutes and you'll never have to be stuck in a poetry test again. The secret formula is called Art Wars. The A in Art Wars stands for about. Explaining what the poem is about is probably the first thing you would do if you were writing an analysis. But it may well be the last thing you work out when you see a poem for the first time. So to help us work out what the poem might be about, we're going to look at the rest of Art Wars. First of all, we're going to look out for ideas that are repeated. Repeated ideas. A repeated idea is sometimes called a theme. For example, let's take a look at Rihanna's Take a Bow. Can you see how ideas about the theatre are repeated? Oh, how about a round of applause? A standing ovation? This just looks like a rerun, but you put on quite a show, curtains finally closing. That was quite a show, very entertaining, but it's over now, and the award for the best liar goes to you. Let's hear your speech. So ideas about the theatre are repeated, which suggests to the reader that Rihanna's relationship was just a show. The love was never real. Clever, huh? Bruno Mars gives us another example of a repeated idea or theme. I'd catch a grenade for you, throw my hand on a blade for you, I'd jump in front of a train for you, you know I'd do anything for you, I would go through all this pain, take a bullet straight through my brain, yes I would die for you baby, but you won't do the same. Look how ideas about war and pain are repeated. This helps to give the impression that the couple's relationship is unpleasant and full of conflict. Okay, the next thing we need to consider is the tone of the poem. This means working out what the mood of the speaker is. Let's look at the Ting Ting's lyrics. They call me Hell. They call me Stacy. They call me Her. They call me Jane. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. We can sense that the speaker is angry, can't we? But what tells us this? Well, the fact that there's a lot of repetition in the song creates an angry poem. They call me hell. They call me. They call me. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. Also, look at how short the lines are. This gives a fast, angry pace to the poem. And sometimes the words chosen can create a certain mood. For example, the word hell might make us think of angry swearing. When you're writing a poem analysis, it's always good to comment on the effect of particular words. Have a look to see which words are especially interesting. For example, the word firework in Katy Perry's line, baby, you're a firework makes the reader imagine something beautiful, powerful, awesome. A 
And look at the word heart in Lady Gaga's poker face. Love game, intuition, play the cards with spades to start, and after he's been hooked, I'll play the one that's on his heart. Heart makes us think she's going to make a play for his heart, but also suggests she's playing a gambling game, perhaps by how, hiding how she really feels about him. Because we think about hearts as in the type of cards in a, in a set of playing cards. Another great tip for analysing a poem you've never seen before is to pick out and comment on a poetic technique like alliteration. Remember, alliteration is where you get letter sounds repeated. Look at all the alliteration in Cheryl Cole's song. Anything that's worth having is sure enough worth fighting for. Quitting's out of the question. When it gets tough, gotta fight some more. Can you hear how the alliteration, the repetition of consonants, creates a rhythm of punching or pounding to make us think of fighting? The next part of Art Wars is rhyme and rhythm. People often forget to think about rhyme and rhythm when they analyse a poem. And this is a shame because it can really impress the examiner. In fact, the rhyme and rhythm can give you all sorts of clues as to the message the poet wants to get across. Look at the strange rhymes in Adele's song. Down now, shy light, uninvited, fight it, beg, said, flies, lives. The rhymes are half rhymes, aren't they? They're not quite right. Just like her relationship is not quite right. Her relationship is not working properly. So the broken rhyme reflects the broken relationship. Isn't that clever? Look at how Kesha uses rhythm. The poem is about time ticking away and Kesha has very cleverly written the whole thing in a tick-tock rhythm. Listen, tick-tock on the clock, but the party don't stop, no, don't stop, make it pop, DJ, blow my speakers up tonight, I'm a fight till we see the sun light, tick-tock on the clock, but the party don't stop. Finally, looking at the structure of the poem is really important. Looking at structure means looking at the way the poem is put together and the order in which ideas are shared. Look at the structure of Celo's Forget You. The speaker starts off trying to convince the reader that he is over his girlfriend, but by the end of the poem, he makes it quite clear that he's desperate to have her back. So hopefully now you've worked out what the poem is about by doing all of those things and you can start writing your essay using Art Wars about repeated ideas, tone, words, alliteration, rhyme and rhythm and structure. Art Wars. Thank <laughs> you.